like to move to point number five. It's a debate on health union, on a health union for Europe and its regions. I would like to invite Commissioner Stella Kiriakides, Commissioner for Health and Food Safety, to join us in the stage. Thank you so much, Commissioner, for taking the time to be with us. Um, without further delay, I would like to give you the floor on this debate. Um, I think 10 minutes? I'll try. Okay. I'll count on your efforts. You have the floor for 10 minutes, and thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a great pleasure to be here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I will definitely try to, to limit myself to 10 minutes. Mr. President, please interrupt me if I go over time. Um, I want to really, really stress how important it is for me to have the opportunity to be here with the Committee of, of the Regions to, to dis have a debate on, on health a topic which um, over the last uh, three years, I think we have all seen how its importance has changed at the level of the EU. And because of the pandemic, we saw of the uh, importance to have affordable, effective, and resilient uh, health systems. But more importantly, we need to have health systems which are accessible to all. And this is what the European Health Union that we have been uh, building uh, is all about. It is about improving the resilience of Europe's health systems. It's about protecting the health of European citizens. And it's about equipping ourselves and member states to better able to be protected against future pandemics. And you, as the Committee of the Regions, is the voice of, uh, many, of many of our citizens, of all our citizens, and so I'm really uh, happy to be here to be able to update you on the key aspects of the European Health Union. And if I may be allowed a, a little personal note, I have um, a friend and colleague sitting in the audience from Cyprus, Eleni Lukaidu, and I have heard so much about the work done here that... Um, uh, it's, it's a pleasure, really, and I know how important it is to be the voice of our citizens. Your committee has played a most important role in uh, our efforts to respond to COVID, and I want to thank you for your support. Three years ago, you proposed uh, essential points for the creation of an EU health emergency system, and your request was fully in line with our plans to set up a European health union and to propose a new health security framework. For many that may remember, when we started speaking of a European Health Union in 2020, I heard from so many people saying, you cannot speak of this, health is a member state's competence, and of course it is. But we were able, within the treaty, to put certain pillars into place that will change the realities of health, uh, and, of course, now the member states, all of us together, are working towards this. We have already four pieces, key pieces of legislation that have been adopted and are in place as a response to your concerns. We have reinforced the European Medicines Agency, EMA. Uh, we have reinforced the mandate of the European Center of Disease Prevention and Control. They did a great deal of excellent work in the pandemic, but we, need to, we needed to reinforce them structurally. And we established the, a new authority for health emergency and preparedness uh, called HERA. We have adopted a new, serious, uh, a new regulation on serious cross-border health threats to health. Um, in order to have coordinated action, and more than that, so that no region is meant behind, the, is left behind. The pandemic has put a spotlight on really the complex nature of supply chains, 
uh, and the importance of building EU's strategic autonomy in the area of medicines and medical devices. And many of you may remember that we had the shortage of masks, that we, we were dependent on other parts of the world. And what we saw following this was what we can do when we're working together. And the best example of that is the EU vaccine strategy. Uh, we were able to vaccinate European citizens for COVID-19 all at the same time, no matter which member state they lived in. And this shows a part of what we can do when we work together. We also had joint purchasing of therapeutics, of uh, protective equipment, and of stockpiling. And now with our new authority, HERA, we are better prepared. We work closely with member states, but also globally with all our international partners to strengthen our rapid response and preparedness. We need to be able to, to be prepared and react, not react after the event. I also want to take this opportunity, if I may, to thank you for the support <coughs> of Europe's Beating Cancer Plan. This is the first ever comprehensive plan we have to ca tackle cancer. Uh, of course, um, member states are fully on board with this because ultimately the regions have the primary responsibility for health care. But we are also able to facilitate the cross-border collaboration so that they can um, exchange expertise and empower the health force. We have set up now the first EU network which will link comprehensive cancer centers so that we exchange information and expertise across member states. We are setting up an interspeciality cancer training program for all uh, the main oncology professions. And for the first time, this was launched in February, um, was uh, the launch of the European Cancer Inequalities Register. The importance of that is not in order to highlight the differences and, in a sense, name and shame any regions or any member states. The importance of that is that it allows us to use this unprecedented funding we have for the cancer plan of 4.1 billion euro to target where we need to support, both in, across member states but within member states where the regions need it most. And this is the way you tackle inequalities. You cannot have a European health union which does not have equal uh, access to, to services, whether it's prevention, diagnosis, uh, and, 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 um, and treatment. Uh, another important pillar of the European Health Union is that of medicines. And I, I have a fundamental belief, a fundamental conviction, that every citizen across the EU deserves to have timely and equal access to medicines no matter where they live. We have proposed a bold and ambitious reform of the pharmaceutical legislation after 19 years. And uh, what we are uh, doing this is to deliver innovation, but also to make sure that this innovation reaches patients. This reform for ourselves is based on the three A's, on the concept of accessibility, of affordability, and of availability. This is uh, one of the most significant, I think, pillars of the European Health Union, and this is now being discussed in the European Parliament. Another pillar is the European health data space. Uh, and all these, if, if, if we look at what we have put forward for the European Health Union, I want you to see it as a toolbox, because each pillar comes to complement each other. So if you have a Europe's beating cancer plan, you also need pharmaceutical reform so that cancer patients have access to treatments wherever they live. But you also need to have sharing of health data. And the Europe's, uh, European health data space uh, will allow the sharing and the access of data. This will transform the lives of patients and doctors in the regions of the EU for the better. And this is especially true for border regions and remote regions, including medical uh, deserts. Uh, to do this, of course, we ensure that all electronic health records um, our, um, uh, our respect to our data protection, and we provide significant funding to the member states uh, in order that they can um, be able to, to roll this out. I think the sum is about 810 million uh, euro. 
Uh, uh, member states have already earmarked over 43 billion euro for health investments and reforms in their national uh, plans. I will end, but I cannot not refer to what day it is today. And today is Mental Health Day. Uh, and I think it's important that we highlight mental health. And today, uh, following the COVID-19 pandemic, the climate crisis, the war, and I saw the interest, the, the discussion you had, not only about um, the Russian uh, invasion of Ukraine, and we know what uh, impact that has, but the recent um, unac unacceptable uh, barbaric uh, a terrorist attack of Hamas uh, in Israel, uh, all this has uh, led to uh, many mental health challenges for many of the European citizens. And uh, in June, we adopted for the first time as a commission the first comprehensive approach to mental health. And we're working already with member states, with stakeholders, the Committee of Regions, in order to be able to put forward our <coughs> flagship actions. So um, I will end here. I want to thank you again for your support of the European Health Union. We are putting the pillars in place and we will move forward. But ultimately, what we have all done working together with the member states, the parliament, stakeholders and yourselves is we have a paradigm shift, a paradigm shift where health is at the top of the political agenda in the EU and we need to look at it in terms of equity for all European citizens, no matter where they live. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. I didn't look at the time. 24 seconds, seconds over. <laughs>
trastornos relacionados con el estrés, con las adicciones, trastornos de la conducta alimentaria, conductas suicidas. Estoy segura de que conocen de cerca algunos casos, bien porque los han padecido en primera persona en su familia o bien porque saben de esos casos entre amigos o compañeros de trabajo. Por muy comunes que sean, los problemas de salud mental siguen siendo grandes olvidados en las agendas políticas. Hoy es el Día de la Salud Mental y hablar de ella es un paso importante. Me consta que esta preocupación alcanza a todas las regiones aquí representadas, por lo que hemos de estar unidos y adoptar medidas valientes. En España y en particular en las regiones donde el reto demográfico es mayor, como ocurre en Extremadura, faltan especialistas sanitarios en algunas ramas como psiquiatría. Actualmente ya disponemos de una red asistencial transversal para atender a los pacientes y vamos a fortalecerla con más recursos. Estamos trabajando en un hospital de día de salud mental en la ciudad de Cáceres y en un nuevo plan estratégico de salud mental. Hay una gran diversidad de factores interrelacionados en el origen de los trastornos mentales, pero me gustaría poner el foco en el uso irresponsable de las nuevas tecnologías, porque afecta especialmente a niños y adolescentes. Los suicidios por ciberacoso van en aumento y es un problema que atañe al conjunto de la Unión Europea. No normalicemos el uso dañino, seamos conscientes, demos visibilidad y tomemos medidas. Está en nuestra mano. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Now the floor goes to member Karsten Uno Peterson for two minutes. Thank you. Madam Commissioner, we used to say that health is not a real competence of the European Union. After the COVID-19 pandemic, we do not say it anymore. And for this reason, in the PES group, we really think that we have to give you credit for the impressive work accomplished these last years. But here, in the left side of this political assembly, we also think that it is still not enough and that the European Union should go further. We are not alone. One of the main conclusions of the Conference of the Future of European Union was to ask more European competences for health, to declare a European health state of emergency in case of a new pandemic or to assess our national health systems through stress tests. I would like also to remind you that regions are key pillars for health in Europe. Pandemic preparedness plans will not work without regions. Pandemic preparedness plans will not work without cross-border dimension. So we would like to ask the European Commission to respect what the European Parliament and the European Committee of the Regions voted on serious cross-border health uh, threats and necessary better involvement of local and regional authorities. We know that a report on the state of preparedness is under preparation and that the European Commission is consulting member states only. This is not the right approach. Health is a regional competence in more than 17 member states. We want to be formally involved to these discussions from now. So, to conclude, a necessary better involvement of local and regional authorities and formally involvement in discussions from now. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Member Isilda Gomes, you have the floor for two minutes. Obrigada, Sr. President. Senhora Comissária, as regiões e os municípios são de facto intervenientes fundamentais na prestação de serviços de saúde à população europeia. Além disso, se alargarmos a nossa visão em matéria de saúde, podemos perceber que as regiões e os municípios são os melhores facilitadores para manter os europeus em boas condições de saúde seja através dos serviços públicos que prestam, das instalações desportivas que desenvolvem ou do papel que desempenham no fornecimento de alimentos de qualidade e saudáveis a todos e, em particular, aos mais frágeis. A saúde deve ser encarada neste sentido mais amplo. Neste contexto, as regiões e os municípios são os melhores aliados da Comissão Europeia para criar uma sociedade saudável. A saúde é também um dos principais motores da resiliência nos nossos territórios. As regiões e os municípios estiveram na vanguarda da resposta europeia durante a pandemia, a pandemia do Covid-19.
É por esta razão que gostaríamos de que os indicadores de saúde se refletissem melhor no painel regional e local de vulnerabilidades desenvolvido pelo CCI. Esta inclusão é uma boa forma de identificar as deficiências e resolvê-las. Será também uma forma de incluir melhores questões de saúde e serviços públicos de saúde nas políticas europeias. Por exemplo, poderíamos imaginar um objetivo específico da política de coesão para abordar os problemas de vulnerabilidade com a saúde como uma das suas principais componentes nas nossas regiões a fim de construir uma Europa mais resiliente para o futuro. O que pensa deste tipo de propostas para o próximo período de programação após 2027? Muito obrigada pela vossa atenção. Member Kate Finney, you have the floor for three minutes. Thank you, President, and thank you, Commissioner, for joining us. Um, I'm glad that you mentioned it is World uh, Mental Health Day and to see that you are wearing your green ribbon. Um, and not to take away from the other topics that you've spoken about, but because of the day it is, um, I will focus on, on mental health for my contribution. I don't need to burden you with stats that you're already familiar with, but I think we do need to agree that mental health is not currently being well served across the Union. Um, there is a saying that your health is your wealth, and that is true for societies as much as it is um, people. Poor mental health, like other illnesses, cuts across all sections of society, and for many, particularly men, it is still viewed as a, ta as a taboo topic, which makes it no surprise that over half of people with mental health issues have not received professional help. There is no other area of healthcare where we would tolerate a statistic like that. Poor mental health is particularly acute in minority groups and within the young LGBTIQ community who suffer poorer mental health and physical health outcomes due mainly to discrimination and stigmatisation. In Ireland, 11% of the travelling community die by suicide. That is one in 10. Members of the travelling community are seven times more likely to die by suicide than those in the general population. And because of this, my local authority have tailored a programme to work with young traveller men in relation to their mental and physical health. Travellers in Ireland do not have a natural predisposition to poorer mental health. The poor mental health in this group can be linked to the fact that in 2019, the EU Agency for Fundamental Rights found that Irish travellers suffer some of the worst discrimination and poverty of any ethnic group in Europe. And on top of this, 80% of the travelling community are unemployed. And this links, Commissioner, with the, the agreement um, earlier on in the week between the EU Health and Employment Ministers to examine precarious work practices and to boost public systems to safeguard mental health in the workplace again highlighting your commitment to the cross-sectoral approach to this topic. In my council, we also offer targeted mental health interventions for older people who frequently suffer poor mental health due to loneliness, and we have seen promising results from a, a pilot social prescribing programme which we intend on rolling out permanently. To conclude, uh, you are right that we need to take lessons from the COVID pandemic and reflect on the fact that when we came together with common purpose, it worked. The need is there for this common approach in mental health, um, but this cause, cause needs real political will at every level, and the cities and regions, those closest to the citizen, need to be involved both in the planning and the rollout. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Member Adam Banashak, you have the floor for two and a half minutes. Szanowna Pani Komisarz, Szanowni Państwo, mam przyjemność być sprawozdawcą opinii w sprawie roli miast jako promotorów zdrowia, która niedawno została przyjęta na posiedzeniu Komisji NAD. W większości krajów regiony i miasta mają do odegrania kluczową rolę w projektowaniu, świadczeniu i często finansowaniu usług opieki zdrowotnej. W związku z tym niestety dla mnie wystąpienie Urszuli von der Leyen w orędziu o stanie Unii w ubiegłym miesiącu było lekko rozczarowujące. Zabrakło wielu odniesień do istotnych programów dotyczących zdrowia w, e, przygotowywanych przez Komisję. Tematyka zdrowia była lekko tylko ledwo wspomniana. Niestety obawiam się, że 
mamy do czynienia z permanentnym zarządzaniem kryzysowym po covid a nie z stałą, systematyczną polityką Unii w tym zakresie. Dlatego apeluję o to, aby utrzymać zdrowie jako jeden z kluczowych priorytetów w następnej kadencji. Warto utrzymać zainteresowanie tematyką zdrowia, aby umożliwić dalsze poszukiwanie rozwiązań dla wspólnych wyzwań w zakresie opieki zdrowotnej w całej Unii. Apeluję jednocześnie o aktualizację raportu o nierównościach zdrowotnych. Ostatni z 2014 roku stał się w wielu aspektach już nieaktualny. Należy go zaktualizować. Chciałbym także podkreślić, że powinniśmy koncentrować się na realnych problemach. Handel narkotykami wpływa na stabilność społeczną i gospodarczą naszych państw. Widzimy dramatyczne konsekwencje, jakie narkotyki mają na, dla młodych ludzi. Otyłość. Statystyki dotyczące otyłości są przerażające. Wreszcie wspomniane już zdrowie psychiczne. Przykład Polski, gdzie niemal dwukrotnie wzrosła ilość prób samobójcza wśród młodych ludzi, pewnie także w wyniku pandemii. Równocześnie jednak nalega na pewną ostrożność, jeśli chodzi o ingerencję Unii Europejskiej w kompetencje państw członkowskich w niektórych tematach związanych ze zdrowiem. Skoncentrujmy się na e, chociażby przeciwdziałaniu spożyciu alkoholu przez młodych ludzi, a zostawmy krajom członkowskim decyzje w zakresie etykietowania takich produktów jak wino. Branża winiarska w wielu regionach, szczególnie na wiejskich obszarach oddalonych od centrów urbanistycznych, mogłaby ucierpieć i pozbawić pracy wielu osób. Wino to nie narkotyk, to nie papierosy. Na koniec chciałbym podkreślić związek zdrowia ze środowiskiem naturalnym. Ilość zieleni, ścieżek rowerowych czy dostęp do publicznego transportu bezpośrednio przekłada się na zdrowie mieszkańców. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Josef Kobor, you have the floor for two minutes. <coughs> Madam Commissioner, uh, after pandemic times, uh, EU citizens have walked and uh, now expects more from the European Union in terms of health policy. For instance, uh, think about uh, measures which were postponed or delayed at that time. For instance, to regulate and restrain the pharmaceutical monopoles and the medical industry monopoles. Or other problem, the principles of the operation of, of social insurance need to be unified in the European Union. Uh, the collaboration between the public and private health care is very bad, and just this problem uh, is uh, uh, connected to the, the operation of the social insurance. The shaping of an efficient health union as in place the transfer of responsibilities from national to European level. I think it means the importance that of all the lessons from the health crisis we have to use and uh, once more uh, regulate the, the social insurance problems and the medical monopoles. Thank you. Thank you. Now, member Erika von Kalban, you have the floor for two minutes. Ja, ich, ich danke Ihnen, Frau Kommissarin Kuriakadis, für Ihren Bericht und für Ihre so wichtige Arbeit. Und insbesondere auch dafür, dass Sie die psychische Gesundheit so in den Blick genommen haben. Die Stärkung der europäischen Gesundheitspolitik ist wichtig und ich unterstütze auch die Forderung meiner Vorrednerin, dass dabei die Regionen nicht nur gehört, sondern auch beteiligt werden müssen. Wir alle haben ja besonders in der Covid-Pandemie erlebt, wie wichtig diese Zusammenarbeit war. Und zwar nicht nur bezogen auf die Impfstoffe und die Medikamente, sondern auch zum Teil die Versorgung der Patientinnen und Patienten. Also auch wir in Schleswig-Holstein haben äh, Menschen aus anderen Ländern aufgenommen und andersrum. Das war gelebte europäische Solidarität. Für mich und für uns als Grüne ist es so wichtig, dass wir Gesundheit auch im Zusammenhang mit einer gesunden Umwelt und dem Kampf gegen den Klimawandel betrachten. Denn dieser Zusammenhang ist offensichtlich, wenn man zum Beispiel die steigende Zahl der Hitzetoten sieht. Und jüngst haben wir bei der Endbesitzung in Malaga auch gehört, das hat mich zumindest überrascht, dass zehn Prozent aller Sterbefälle direkt oder indirekt auf die Luftverschmutzung zurückgehen. Das ist schon sehr erschreckend, finde ich. 
Ich möchte noch einen Punkt erwähnen, der gerade im ländlichen Raum eine große Sp Rolle spielt. Das ist der Fachkräftemangel. Unsere Gesundheitsversorgung hängt von Menschen ab, von Ärzten und Ärztinnen, Pflegekräften und Therapeuten. Und auch hier brauchen wir eine gute europäische Zusammenarbeit bei der Ausbildung, bei der Anerkennung von Abschlüssen und auch bei der Unterstützung von Menschen von außerhalb der EU, die bei uns leben und arbeiten wollen. Für diese brauchen wir ausreichende Integrationsangebote und ein weltoffenes Europa. Danke. Thank you. Member Stefan Ilie, you have the floor for one minute. Uniunea Europeană a Sănătății trebuie să se asigure că fiecare cetățean primește protecție medicală de calitate, indiferent de locul în care trăiește. Acest principiu este deosebit de vital în orașele de la granița Uniunii, ca și municipiul Tulcea, situat la frontiera cu Ucraina. În Tulcea, comunitatea se bucură de avantajele unei frontiere deschise, dar acest lucru aduce și responsabilități în ceea ce privește protejarea și îngrijirea sănătății. O Uniune a Sănătății Eficiente se asigură că locuitorii din Tulcea au acces la servicii medicale de calitate chiar și atunci când se confruntă cu provocări în contextul războiului de la graniță. Stimată doamnă comisar, este nevoie de creșterea investițiilor în infrastructura de sănătate. Prin alocarea de fonduri speciale de către Comisia Europeană sprijinim spitalele, cabinetele medicale, umane sau veterinare și asigurăm resursele necesare pentru a atrage specialiștii în domeniul sănătății care să lucreze în zonele de graniță. Este o măsură crucială, mai ales în contextul agresiunii ruse și a creșterii presiunii la frontiera Uniunii Europene. Mulțumesc! Thank you. Member Loredana Capone, you have the floor for one minute. Ringrazio la commissaria, ci fa un enorme piacere sentire che la salute sia una priorità per l'Unione Europea, perché sappiamo che soprattutto dopo la pandemia si è rafforzato il bisogno di interventi coordinati e pensiamo che la politica di coesione possa aiutare a superare i divari che esistono. Dobbiamo rispondere al bisogno e alle aspettative di cittadini spingendo perché siano rispettati i livelli essenziali di assistenza in tutti i territori e per tutti i cittadini dell'Unione per tutte le patologie, con riferimento anche alla salute mentale. Sappiamo quanto sia importante investire nella ricerca e su programmi che evitino che, si soffra, che chi soffra si senta anche escluso. Rischiamo troppo. Rischiamo che siano traditi i principi fondamentali che sono presenti in tutte le nostre Costituzioni, universalità, universalità uguaglianza, equità, nella prevenzione, nella diagnosi e nella cura. Perché dobbiamo evitare con tutte le nostre forze che ci siano conseguenze dalla mancata assistenza non solo nell'ambito sanitario ma anche nell'ambito economico e sociale perché si tratta di condizioni che aggravano la vita quotidiana delle Thank persone. Thank you so much. An Member Anna Maghiari, you have the floor for one minute. Thank you. Tisztelt Biztos Asszony. Ez év januárjában jelentős gyógyszerhiány lépett fel az EU-ban, több országban szinte elérhetetlenek voltak az antibiotikumok és egyéb gyógyszerek is. Az ellátás a januári szomorú helyzeten túlmenően is akadozik. Mi régiós szintű politikusok a saját állampolgáraink érdekét képviselve meg kell kérdezzük, mit tesz az Európai Bizottság és személyesen a biztos asszony, hogy megelőzze a gyógyszerhiány újabb hullámait. Az EU-ban reális elvárás, hogy megfizethetőek és hozzáférhetőek legyenek a gyógyszerek. Ez az állampolgáraink biztonságérzetéhez alapvetően hozzátartozik. Köszönöm a szót. Thank you. Member Andros Karajanis, you have the floor for one minute. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ κύριε Πρόεδρε. Κύριε Επίτροπη, με βάση ευρωπαϊκές στατιστικές μελέτες όπως αυτή της Eurostat, 15,8 του πληθυσμού στην Ευρωπαϊκή Ωνση ζει μόνος του. Σε κάποιες χώρες της Ευρωπαϊκής Ένωσης, το ποσοστό των ανθρώπων που ζουν απομονωμένοι φτάνει μάλιστα μέχρι το 25%. Αυτή η μοναξιά, η απομόνωση, επηρεάζει κυρίως τις γυναίκες, οι οποίες αντιπροσωπεύουν το 55% των ατόμων που ζουν μόνοι τους. Κυρίως άτομα της τρίτης ηλικίας νιώθουν έντονα το αίσθημα της μοναξιάς, αφού το 2022 στην Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση 32% ηλικιωμένων ανθρώπων ζούσαν εντελώς μόνοι τους στο σπίτι. Μετά την πανδημία του κορονοϊού, αρκετοί ανθρώποι βιώνουν τη μοναξιά με αποτέλεσμα να αντιμετωπίζουν μεγαλύτερες πιθανότητες πρόρου θανάτου αλλά και ψυχικών διαταραχών. 
Τι κάνετε λοιπόν ως αρμόδια επίτροπος για αντιμετώπιση του φαινομένου της απομόνωσης και της μοναξιάς. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Thank you. Member Igor Androvich, you have the floor for one minute. Hvala predsjedniče. Posljednje dvije godine obilježila je globalna pandemija koja je na površine izdugnula goruće probleme koji su zajednički državama članicama Evropske unije poput pristupa pacijenata lijekovima i neometane prekogranične zdravstvene skrbi. Postavlja se pitanje kako Evropska unija može odgovoriti na te izazove. Jedno od ponuđenih rješenja je razvoj dodatne fizičke infrastrukture za pohranu zdravstvenih podataka u državama članicama za koju nacionalna, ali i lokalna i regionalna razina moraju dobiti financijsku podršku. Pitanje koje mora biti u središtu novog mandata Evropske komisije i parlamenta je kako provesti zelenu tranziciju kojoj zdravlje građana mora biti primarni cilj bez narušavanja evropskog načina života i geopolitičke i gospodarske konkurentnosti Evropske unije. Thank you, member Florian Schutz. You have the floor for one minute. Sehr geehrte Frau Kommissarin, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, gerade in einer Pandemie zeigt sich, wie verletzbar das nationale Gesundheitssystem ist. Es geht darum, Maßnahmen zur Verstärkung der Widerstandsfähigkeit und der Zugänglichkeit zur Gesundheitsversorgung zu finden. Darüber hinaus ist es unabdingbar, längerfristige Gefahrenanalysen zu machen. Wichtig ist jedenfalls dabei auch der Aspekt des, Gender, des Genderwesens. Wir haben in Wien seit 1998 ein eigenes Wiener Frauengesundheitsprogramm, das das berücksichtigt. Wichtig ist jedenfalls die Identifikation von Abhängigkeiten, Wege zu deren Überwindung und die Einbettung in die globalen Lieferketten. Dabei ist die Frage der Produktion in Europa, die Diversifizierung der Wertschöpfungs- und Lieferketten und die Bevorratung von einer entscheidenden Bedeutung. Doppelte Lieferketten, um die Abhängigkeit von Regionen außerhalb Europas äh, äh, zu erreichen, sind wichtig und müssen von Seiten der Kommission massiv betrieben werden. Dankeschön. Thank you, Member Oskar Sestak. You have the floor for one minute. Már a régi görögtől származó felismerés, mi szerint épp testben, épp lélek. Ezért is örömmel hallottam az egészség holisztikus megközelítését öntől. A mentális egészségünk is hatással van a fizikai jólétünkre, és nyilván fordítva is. Az, hogy milyen ételt eszünk, az is szorosan összefügg az egészségünkkel. Mintha a bizottság az ukrán gabona Európába való beengedését csak piaci szempontokból vizsgálta volna. Ez is nagy károkat okoz a gazdáinknak, de ugyanakkor a fogyasztóinknak is félelemkeltő, és kérem vegyék figyelembe a döntéshozatalnál a jövőben, hogy olyan ellenőrizetlen minőségű mezőgazdasági termékek, gabona termékek kerültek be az Unió, az Unió belső piacaira, olyan toxikus anyokat használnak, amelyeket az Európa már régen, régen betiltottak. Végezetű figyelembébe ajánlom, hogy a fizikai Nobel-díj ezévi dézottja Krausz Ferenc kutatási eredményeit is felhasználva Magyarországon, Szegeden, az újonnan megalakult Európai Uniós támogatással létrejött lézerközpontban ígéretes kutatások kezdődtek a legfőbb halálázási okok, így a rák korai diagnosztizálása érdekében is. Kérem ezt a jövőben vegyék figyelembe. Thank you. Uh... Dear colleagues, uh, Commissioner uh, Kiriakidis has to leave, um, so we still have requests for the floor, but uh, I, would, I will give her the floor uh, to comment in some of the concerns that were already expressed in the questions. You have the floor, Commissioner. Thank you. I'm sorry, but there was a change in your program, I think, and I, we started a bit later, and I have a, an, uh, an obligation to be at the European Parliament. I will try and pick up as many of the points that you have uh, raised. Um, Member Sagradeo started by saying that health is wealth. And several of you, I think it was also Member Magier, if I've got the name correctly, mentioned the issue of medicine shortages. And you're absolutely right. It is an issue that uh, we have uh, been faced with at many times across the European Union. And we are taking specific uh, measures and work to address shortages. We all remember that uh, the last year and the shortages we have with antibiotics, for the first time we're working towards having a, a list of critical medicines so that we are be able to be better prepared. 
Uh, we have um, EMA has issued a list of recommendations also to member states to take actions to avoid potential shortages, for example, of key antibiotics, which you mentioned. But more than that, we're also working through HERO with industry because it's, it's, it's not effective to deal with shortages once they happen. So what we're working towards is that companies need to notify if they're going to uh, withdraw a medicine or if they're going to have issues with the, sh with the shortage before it happens so we're able to work uh, better with, with member states. Um, also, uh, Member Sagradeus mentioned <coughs> that we need to do more in terms of, of medicines. And I just wanted to share with you that what we have in the EU, we have safe and effective medicines. What we do not have is a single market for medicines. And that is what all the patients deserve, to have access of, for medicines when they need them. Because we talk about fostering innovation and the pharmaceutical companies, some of you spoke about that. It's important that we keep them uh, to be innovative and to be front runners in Europe because we need the innovation, but that innovation needs to reach citizens no matter where they live. And this is why we believe that the reform proposal we put forward uh, puts a balance into this. Um, Member Guardiola Martin spoke about sharing best practices um, in mental health, and I just wanted to to just tell you that we're already working on, on a project uh, with that between member states to share bed practices for uh, preventing depression and suicide. I, in fact, visited um, a center in Madrid which deals with taking calls for suicide prevention, um, and member states can share best practices so that we are able to, uh, to be more effective, uh, but we're going further than that. We also uh, have projects for training of professionals because uh, it's important that we do that. Um, Member uh, Peterson, um, I'm, I'm not, I won't discuss about uh, member states, um, about health being a member state's competence. It is, but we have shown all together, because this is all together, what we can do. Um, and you spoke about the regulation of serious cross-border th health threats and what it's doing at regional level. Uh, there are many references in the new regulation to the regional uh, and local levels, and we need to, to work together because what we have seen with COVID is that diseases and infect infectious diseases know no borders. And um, cooperation is regulated through the regulation on serious cross-border threats so that we're able to survey infectious diseases um, as they appear. Uh, you are totally correct uh, on, on the pandemic preparedness plans needed for every region, uh, and um, I look forward to, to working with you uh, in this. I heard of, your, uh, of what you said about wanting to be involved in these consultations from the very beginning. I did note it down. Member Gomez, the importance of regions in health. Well, there can be no health without mental health. Um, equity and access is fundamental. I am not in any way saying that we have solved all the issues. But what I am saying as Commissioner for Health and Food Safety is that we are working on a different paradigm shift in health over the last three years. And this we are not doing alone as a Commission. You are important partners in this process because you represent citizens and you are aware of what is going on in the most remote parts of Europe that we need to be able to, to reach out to. Um, uh, M member, uh, I think it was Member Feeney, if I am correct, um, spoke about mental health and the importance of making sure that we, are, we reach um, all parts of, um, of Europe. Implementation on the ground is key, you're absolutely right. And yes, I'm so happy, glad that you mentioned it. We need to look at stigma. We need to look at minorities. We need to look at the rights of LGBTQI plus people, of the displaced, of the women, of the refugees. Um, and we need to finally encourage people to say, it's okay not to be okay, and to ask for help. Um, member Banarsak, um, mentioned that President von der Leyen hardly mentioned health in her State of the Union speech. Uh, 
President von der Leyen mentioned the European Health Union in his State of the Union, Europe, State of the Union speech in 2020. And this commission is, we work all together, and I can assure you that the President is focused on what we can achieve. And everything that we have, if we have achieved, that's for you to judge, uh, this is uh, collegial decisions, and we all work together to, to working. And, I just wanted to say something because this needs to be understood. When we're working on, on plans like Europe's Beating Cancer Plan, on the mental health comprehensive approach, this is horizontal across the Commission and across the College. For Europe's Beating Cancer Plan, we were 13 or 14 commissioners working towards it. The same with mental health. This is the only way that you can bring about change. You need to be holistic and you need to be horizontal. Um, and on obesity, because you mentioned it, yes, there is a, a, a specific part on obesity in, uh, a, in our Healthier Together initiative. Um, and uh, we're working into supporting member states uh, this, and it's also part of Farm to Fork strategy, which is the other half of my portfolio. Member Corbo said citizens should expect more. Um, I... I expect citizens to expect more, and I expect us to try and deliver. Uh, and um, th we should be there because we should be there for citizens. Um, there were other uh, point, uh, issues by Member Von Kaber, Member Ilie, uh, good health care no matter where they live. And I mentioned the um, Cancer Inequalities Register. That is an example of what we can do to see where there are inequalities so we can better, better support. Uh, Member Cabon mentioned something which I think I'm very glad that I heard this, and it's the word research, because we really need to be addressing all the issues. We need to have science and good science and research behind them. Uh, Member Garayani spoke on loneliness. Um, loneliness is part of the portfolio of the excellent work done by Vice President Suiza. But I will say here that in our mental health approach, uh, Vice President Suiza is very involved, and we are also looking at the issues to do with the vulnerable. And of course, loneliness is an issue. And for two years, we've been working on a project called Loneliness in, in the EU. Um, I think that uh, I have covered. I hope most of the points, there was a point on gender, and gender perspective is horizontal in all uh, our policies. And there was another ish, uh, point by Member Androvich and on uh, pharmaceutical reform and data. And I wanted to tell you that part of the European health data space uh, is um, what we are working on called My Health at EU. And what we, what we are working towards is that all citizens no matter where they live in the EU, will be able to have on their mobile phones their, um, uh, their summaries, their medical images, they will be able to use their prescriptions. So this really gives the citizen control of their own health data, no matter where they live uh, in the European uh, Health Union. I hope that I've covered as many points as possible. Again, I apologize that uh, I have to leave you, but I have to be at an event in the European Parliament on mental health. It's a special day today. I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to be here and to hear from you, and I hope that I get the opportunity to, to be back again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, Madam Commissioner, thank you so much. We really want to thank you for taking the time to be with us, and I wish you all the best. And certainly, we'll have another opportunity thank to exchange. You so much. Thank you.